Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Sarah and this video is going to be the top five books that I've read so far that I've gotten from BookBub. If you don't know, BookBub is basically a subscription email you can get every day. They have it so you can set up kind of like a profile on their website and it asks for multiple things like I think it asks for like genres you like and stuff like that, books that you have read, and then they'll send you a daily email that you can get digital books from Amazon anywhere from zero dollars to like $5.99. Every day there's different books and yeah it's just it's great. Every once in a while they check in with you and ask you what books that you've read and kind of your ratings and reviews on them if you want to do that just so they can keep up to date with the genres that they should keep sending you. And it's just something that I've really liked. So I have probably close to 100 to 150 books on my Kindle that I've gotten from BookBub. 95% of them were free or like $1.99 or $2.99 or just like 99 cents. It's it's great but today I'm gonna to be telling you about the top five books that I've liked so far that I've read because I haven't even made a dent in the amount of books that I get because some days I want multiple some days I want just one some days I don't want any but it's just a collection that I have acquired so let's get going so these top five books that I've really really enjoyed I'm gonna work up to my most favorite but the first one was a four star read for me and that was bound by duty by stormy Smith I gave this a four star like I was saying but the average star for this one is a 3.8 on Goodreads. And this follows a girl Amelia. She's grown up knowing and being told how important she is but no one will really give her details so she knows she's important but she doesn't even know how. She's also told that she has to keep control 100% of the time. She has these powers and she can't lose control otherwise other bad things will happen but again no one tells her anything. The secrets go even deeper so she is betrothed to the prince of the immortals and guess what? She doesn't even know his name. What a surprise. So basically her life is just a bunch of unknowns. She is allowed I think like three years of freedom where she gets to go into the regular or human world and so she decides that she is going to enroll herself in a community college to just kind of get what it's like to live in the normal world and be a normal girl. This is where she expects to find a super best friend or a boy that will fall in love with her not for who she's meant to be, but for who she actually is. Basically, this is a book where it's a battle between head and heart. And that's one of my favorite things in books, where the main character is basically battling within themselves what they should do. Should they follow their head or should they follow their heart? I found this to be a really nice, easy, romantic fantasy read, and it's just something I really enjoy. Next is The Woodlands. I gave this five stars, and the average star rating on Goodreads for this one is like a 3.74. So this follows a girl. She, Her name is Rosa. She's 17. She's very high-spirited. She's very outspoken, and in a world where being too outspoken can really define the type of life you live. This world is made up of eight enclosed cities where the last remaining of the human race lives right after a race war divided them and basically killed off most of the population. The superiors or the rulers of these cities are then super obsessed with creating the most perfect raceless race. They are convinced that making a raceless race, or basically beings that are all completely alike, is the only way to avoid another war. After a particular instant in the beginning of the book, Rosa is then put into this high-tech breeding program that the superiors have basically created to genetically create this one race that they think will like save humankind. The story evolves here in the whole plot and character development really goes into a lot of things I haven't seen before. I thought it was unique and really cool to just see where the characters need to go. I still need to read the last book in the series but I'm super excited to finish it. Number three is Relentless by Karen Lynch. I also gave this a five star read. On Goodreads the average is a 4.3 star and this falls Sarah Gray who as a young child witnessed her father being murdered by a vampire and so she goes out trying to find basically answers to this underworld or shadow world and in this quest to find answers and the vampire that ripped her family apart, she runs across Nicholas, this warrior who pretty much protects the human race from these said demons. She then becomes hunted by this underworld that she has just kind of been thrusted upon into. And her world 
turns upside down. Something she wasn't quite expecting, but what she was actually searching for has found her. She's not quite ready for the consequences of what that entails. Number four is The Nameless Series by Jennifer Jenkins. So the three other books, I got the first book to the series all for free. This book I got for 99 cents and I gave it a five star. The average star rating on Goodreads for this one is a four star. And this one ha is basically a world that's divided up into clans. Each clan is basically represented by an animal. And this one follows a seven 17 year old girl named Zoe. She's part of the wolf clan and she decides that for the allied forces because these clans are all at war with herself she is basically going to go on a suicide mission into the ram gate to infiltrate the ram clan which is basically the strongest clan in this world she then becomes basically a slave within the ram gate and she becomes part of what they call the nameless clan so these are people that are either prisoners of war or don't belong to a clan and so they are called the nameless she goes on the suicide mission because she wants revenge for her parents who were murdered in like this war and she's gonna go on this mission not only to get revenge but also maybe try to help end the war if she possibly can. It's just is a ride from the very beginning. This book deals a lot with integrating different types of people, dealing with different mindsets, history, views of points, class systems, and more. I think there's a lot in this book. Even though it's a fiction book, there's a lot that I, everyone can learn from reading this book and kind of take taking the themes out of it and kind of dissecting them. And I think that's one of the things I really loved most about this book. The next book is one I'm probably most happy I found. So this is my number one book bub find. This one was a little bit more expensive. It was $5.99. I gave it a five plus stars. I love this series. I have talked about it a couple times on this channel. The average star rating for this one is a 3.7. So this one follows a 17 year old girl named Nim and she is an elemental slave. No one knows that she's really an elemental except for her past slavers because she's not really supposed to even exist. This is an elemental book. I love elemental books. I love anything where characters have powers that are focused around the elements. And in this world, females aren't even supposed to have powers. And 99% of the male elementals have been killed off. So at the beginning of the book a few things happen. She is trying to deal with a lot of things that she's done in the past even knowing they're, they were accidental. There's been some deaths and she doesn't have any grasp or hold on her powers and so she's really just fighting to basically live with herself after some of the things that happened and I think that's a really good theme in the book. There is a trigger warning basically for self-harm because it is one of her coping mechanisms. You follow her being auctioned off at a slave auction. Auction. This is her 15th cell and basically she's being sold to the highest bidder. She is sold to a very high class lady and then Nim is completely and utterly just pushed into this world of politics, parties, and it just has so much fast-paced action. It has a really amazing romance and I can't talk about this book enough. Nim is trained as a weapon. She is taught how to control her powers and she falls in love. And it's just, it's one of the best series I've ever read. I really do, really do enjoy this series. So that's it. Those are my five top finds of BookBub. Really excited. I am planning another BookBub themed video. My top five books I'm excited to get to that I've gotten from BookBub. But like I said, I have about 100 to 150 books to kind of go through until I get to that point. I hope you guys all have a great day and all the love. Bye.